yeah, 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 yeah. It was a crisp fall night, and a friend and I decided to venture to a starlight corn maze. Along the pathways, we answered questions which determined if it was a right or left turn. And if we were wrong, we soon hit a dead end. I decided to take this event and bring the different elements together into a sketch. Starting with the corn husk here, I'm going to build on this, use my watercolor pencil crayons, and bring this all together into a memory sketch. What I'll do is I'm just going to add a whole bunch of corn stalks sort of in the in the background here and after I've activated all the watercolor pencil crayons and added different tones and different colors and then I'm going to draw a maze in there probably with some white paint or something like that and so we're going to watch that develop in time each one of these kernels is going to need to be outlined with the dark rusty color so we can give it some dimension. Of course, this is all very tedious and time consuming, so you can kind of do a little bit at a time. Add some more scribbles and colors in the background. So what we're going to have is the, the outside here is going to be blurry and then the corn cob itself is going to be in detail in focus hopefully by the end of this. And that'll bring it all together and then you'll see how we create the maze. So still a ways to go here before we're ready to work on the maze. But I'm just choosing some different colors. And just adding various tones in the background so when I activate that in a few minutes with the water it's just gonna all blend together and become like a, an abstract of what it maybe looks like in real life in a corn maze because it is a maze of all kinds of dried stalks and leaves and Sure, there's lots of bugs in there too. Maybe we could draw a bug in somewhere. All right, I'm ready to start activating some of the pigments here. I think what I'm going to start with first is just the big leaves. So I'm using just a, a watercolor brush. Um, you can, if you don't have one of these with the water well in the back, as you can see this one I've used it for many years now, so it's quite well used. And you can just use simply a brush with a container of water to activate one section at a time. And I am working my lines in the direction of the grain of the husk from the corn stalk. And I'm going to add some detail lines on top of it when this part is dry. Because the paper is fairly thin, it does dry fairly quickly, which will work to our advantage here. And you just want to be careful not to overlap other areas, just stay in the area that you're working in. Once the pencil crayon has been activated and it dries, then it basically fixes it. Activating all the yellow and all the kernels, but I'm going to have to add some white back in. Highlights and a bit of shading to make them look a little bit more realistic. You can see I've put in the black and the gray over here. And sometimes with the darker colors, you're going to have to clean your pigment off of the paintbrush so I'm just gonna scribble it into other areas since I want some dark there anyways taking the black from here and adding it somewhere else in the background there we go I'm going to work it in a little bit more adding some shading and I'm gonna work this piece here from the husk and then I'm going to just put a few more details in 
with the pencil. I'm going to probably add some writing into there, maybe into the maze. Uh, just to make it interesting and then it's going to like I said merging the activity of walking the corn maze together with the drawing of the corn maze to bring that memory together from that day from that trip and that's how I uh, create my travel journal just a little bit of white paint I carry this little tube with me and my pencil case for when I'm traveling and now I'm going to squeeze some water out and I'm going to make that a little bit more watery. Don't want it quite so strong. And I'm going to play with each little corn kernel and I'm just going to add a bit of a highlight in and it might be hard to s Oh no, you can see that on the camera, can't you? Oops. And I don't get fancy with my supplies, especially when I'm traveling. As you can see, I just have a piece of scrap paper that I've used to dab the white paint on. And so I'm aiming for probably about the same area of each kernel, the top part, imagining that the light is coming from that side, from up here. So just adding a bit of a highlight, that's going to help the kernel. Some details here with some lighter colors into the corn kernels that are showing there as well. The burnt corn kernels, I don't, don't know what happened, why they look like that, if it's just decay or what it is. You can see that the, the white paint, if you're only using um, very a lot of water with it. it is turning a little bit translucent more into a gray which is going to lend itself nicely and then I'm going to add the pencil crayon details of all the little hairs coming down that's going to be one of the last things that I do actually because I do want that to overlap the maze as well now I've put the letters in corn maze and now I'm going to figure out how to make those letters part of the maze. I carry this chiseled black marker with me in my pencil case on my trips. So I've decided to use it and create the illusion of a maze. Kind of like doing calligraphy where... Um, by holding it in the same direction, you can um, create thins and thicks. So I thought this might work well for this application. Since I don't actually want to create a maze, I want to kind of create the illusion of a maze. Might be an easier way for me to fill up this space, make it look like a maze. So I'm doing a series of lines, thicks and thins, around the letters. And I think it's looking pretty good. I think I'm getting somewhere with it. And it's being successful in creating the feel and the image that I'm looking for. I'm just going to keep going with it. Wow, I think I'm going to get lost in that maze. There's a lot of black on there. It's turned into something really strong. I think what I'm going to do is add some words maybe along the pathway here. Just explaining something about the day. And sometimes I like to put little people in to represent who was there. So I'm going to add two little stick men. Me and the friend that I was with. Maybe I'll even add some more kids or something in different places hiding all the different people lost in the maze and maybe a couple other surprise elements that people can then enjoy looking for in the maze to make this drawing a little bit interactive and fun in a different way. In my fine line black marker 
and also these pens, these fine line pens that I love using. And I am just added some detail lines in here, added some hairs and things like that. And outlined the with the black fine line as well, the some little bit more detail on the outside of the corn because the maze has turned out so strong and dark and black that I felt I needed to do that in order to balance the corn in the center of the corn maze. And I've added a couple of little people. If you can see them there at opposite ends of the maze. A little bit of writing about the event. It was a starlight corn maze. And are we going to find our way? And then I've just added some little apples. Because they also have an apple orchard there at the corn maze we went to. And I'll probably review it tomorrow morning. And I'm going to sign it somewhere. So I'll put the date usually and sometimes just my name, sign it, Therese. And now this is going to be part of my travel log collection for everybody. There you have it, the finished corn maze sketch from uh, that adventure. Hope you had fun. Remember to create, travel, dream, inspire. Come back and have fun with Trees again. Subscribe below, like me, and tell your friends about me. Awesome. Have a super day. Please give this video a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. Subscribe, and you'll get in on all the fun with Trees. See you again soon. Don't jump.